I don't think I'm Mitch Connor, and I don't think I ever said fucking fuck 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 fucking fuck. <laughs> okay, somebody uh, <clears throat> suggested to me that this uh, Hayat Boumediene or whatever might be related to uh, this Algerian president. Uh, I had to put in the year 1976 to uh, even bring this guy up, but apparently his name is spelled with one D, but it's also transcribed according to Wikipedia. Oh, wait, no, that's just one D. Oh, sorry. Um, nonetheless, uh, kind of turns out, let me go back a page here because this is the original search that I did. Um, she was born into an Algerian family of seven. So, she is Algerian. Algeria, on the uh, northwest uh, tip of Africa, right across from Spain here, um, has a number of different cultures uh, or nationalities in it. Uh, it's not all black people, not all of Africa is. And we got different ethnic groups. Uh, that one more over Spanish was spoken. Okay. So that doesn't necessarily um, counter that uh, this Hayat Boumediene was uh, related to the Algerian president of the 1970s. But it doesn't confirm it either. You know, maybe they added a D. People do like little name changes like that. It would take, of course, a uh, genealogy search or something. Um, not quite sure how to do that. I'm not a, you know tech genius or anything. I'm kind of a tech dummy. But we do see here um, that, yeah, Mujian, well, it wasn't her that met Sarkozy. It was her boyfriend, uh, Kudapali or whatever the... I can never remember these names. It's driving me nuts. This is how they were when they met, and Islam women don't usually wear bathing suits, do they? But then she turns into this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's so scary because she has a veil on. My God. Psh, ridiculous. And here he looks like such a sweetheart. <laughs> then we have this, where she's all scary. <laughs> now, I, I don't know if they're making too much out of this. If people are making too much out of this or what. Um, I'm not going to talk crap about anybody for it, you know, but... Uh, he once gushed with excitement when he was handpicked to meet uh, former French President Sarkozy. What was that, 2007, 2009? It was one or the other. Uh, I, I closed the page uh, for the search, so whatever. Now, until I see full-on evidence, I, I seriously doubt it was him that uh, jumped out the door of the uh, kosher deli or whatever it was. Um, after reviewing the video last night, I was severely doubtful and you know I try not to jump to conclusions and come out incorrect and all but uh, I couldn't identify him even after seeing a picture of him lying on the ground I couldn't identify him and I kept forgetting to cover this for days and uh, other people had uh, Free Radio Revolution did a video on it um, the uh, person who was investigating it c killed himself okay on the 8th and this is all in French. Um, I don't have a, the link here for his video. Uh, I'll probably put it up here. But um, that is utterly suspicious because events like this, there always seems to be like at least one person like that kills themselves. You know, uh, people get into controversial things like what was it, Gary Webb, and uh, oh, all of a sudden he kills himself after uh, breaking the uh, Clinton Bush cocaine connection. Oh yeah, it's called being suicided. Even the uh, the DC madam who went on Alex kind of Shill Jones's show um, and said that she was not going to kill herself, and then a couple of days later, maybe a week later, oh, she killed herself. Probably not. But now let me get to the meat of this uh, video. Police stopped watching Paris Killer six months ago after terror cell of kosher deli attacker and his crossbow jihadi wife, <laughs> who has fled to Syria, were deemed low risk. Uh, the source is the Daily Mail right here. Here's the article it links to. Um, <laughs> oh, <laughs> crossbow jihadi wife. <laughs> oh my fucking god, uh, it still makes me laugh. Uh, I've been waiting to make this for two, like two freaking days. Um, <laughs> hang on. 
Okay, the alleged picture of his dead body looks funky, and it does not appear to be near the uh, door uh, where he allegedly do dove out. And to drag his body away from there, I would think, would be a uh, kind of messing with the crime scene sort of thing. Um, doesn't really make sense. Though, you know, I never said I was right about the guy being dragged over to the right of the door. Um from the vantage point of the camera angle, but, uh... <laughs> she looks funny holding that. <laughs> okay, hang on. It is thought that the firearms were smuggled from the Balkans into Europe and then into France by car, something a single woman is likely to have been able to get away with far easier than men. Yep, 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 yep. yep. Okay. Um, so... In 2010, she told police who interviewed her as part of their inquiries into Kolobali's dealings with Islamic extremists that she had walked away from a low-paid job as a cashier in 2009 and began wearing an Islamic veil, the kind that is now illegal in France. Um, so did she continue to wear it? I don't know. Uh, even though it was illegal. Uh, Boum Dien said that she was inspired by her husband and the radicals she lived with to read a lot of books on religion, and because of this I came to ask questions on religion, she says. Did she actually say the radicals she lived with? Probably not. Um, nonetheless, uh, she added, when I saw the massacre of the innocents in Palestine, in Iraq, in Chechnya, in Afghanistan, or anywhere the Americans sent their bombers, all that, well, who are the terrorists? And <laughs> regardless, in a way, she's right, but radical uh, Islam kind of stuff is, I don't know, probably fake anyways with this uh, woman, but nonetheless, um, you know, created they're creating their own opposition. Uh, and we'll come more into that in a sec. Uh, she said what, that when Americans killed innocents, it was the right of men to defend their women and children. One of the reasons she said she started weapons training along with Kulabadi. She was pictured in 2010 visiting a convicted Al-Qaeda terrorist, mentor uh, Jamel Bigal, who was radicalized at the Finsbury Park Mosque in North London, where he was under house arrest in Marat, central France. And there's that silly picture again. When police questioned her and said they uh, knew she and Kulabali had visited Bigal at the same time as Sharif Kouachi and two other convicted terrorists, <coughs> Jihadi recruiter Ahmed Laiduni uh, and uh, Farid Malouk of the armed Islamic State terrorist group, she replied, who we went there for crossbow practice. Why would she even fucking say anything? Anyway, um crossbow practice like <laughs> <laughs> anyway until recently the couple lived in Bagneu a suburb of Paradise where they knew, were known as devoutly religious despite Kulabali's regular run-ins with the law and that's an important point here and I'll give you some insight in a sec to neighbors the pair were, qui were quiet and respectful but while Boumediene had no criminal record Kulabali had a, has a long history of both petty and serious crimes the only boy of a family of 10 in GVC is he first came to police attention as a 17-year-old. Uh, Convictions for theft and drug offenses followed. Uh, he was arrested for an attempted armed robbery on a bank in Orleans in September 2002. So that's over 12 years ago. Odien, who was never seen in public without her veil, even though it was illegal in France, waited four years for Koulibaly to come out of jail after his conviction for armed robbery. <coughs> she met the younger of the Kwachi brothers, Sharif, Oh, wait, so she waited four years. She waited until 2006. Okay, she, she met the younger of the Kwachi brothers, Sharif, at a time when the pair were linked to a jihadist recruitment ring that sent fighters to Iraq. Sharif was convicted in 2008 and sentenced to three years in jail, 18 months suspended, for his association with the underground organization. He had wanted to fly to Iraq via Syria and was found with a manual for a Kalashnikov, the automatic, automatic weapon he used in last week's outrages. Ooh... Okay, so um, she gets radicalized in Islam with a man who is um, <laughs> arrested for an attempted armed robbery. What a great time, and this is speculation, okay, but what a great opportunity for, um, you know, intelligence agencies and such to make a deal with this guy. You know, be our uh, patsy or some shit. I don't know. Just, just speculation. Um, here's this uh, Jamel Begal guy. And how they got these pictures, I really don't know. They seem completely fucking set up. Um, 
Okay, yeah, fine if, like, they had, like, far away, like, spying on them type photos, okay, but how, how, how the hell did they get these pictures so fast of them, okay? They look, they look set up to me. And there's his body again. And now I'm annoyed because uh, about two days after I uh, saved all these links that I got up here, and, well, <laughs> yeah, uh, this article had said that this video was released by the site Intelligence Group, of which I have made videos on before, okay? It has disappeared from the article. I wish I would have taken a screenshot, and I needed to do that more in, often in the future, because it said this in this article, this is the exact reason why I saved it, because the site Intelligence Group run by Rita Katz is a fucking fraud, okay? Um, just go through my older videos. It's, it's somewhere in there. Um, okay. I'm probably going to go over the video. I just found it on uh, YouTube, but it's not the whole thing because the Daily Mail... Oh, where'd that go? The Daily Mail article. Um, saying that, like, at the beginning he was doing push-ups and showing... Uh, oh, don't give me this loading problem. Their video was loading for crap, too. Um... Basically here, yeah, he's doing push-ups, okay. Um, no, wait, it's these ones. The footage begins with clips of Kulavali working out and doing uh, press-ups behind a caption detailing a verse from the Quran. And, yeah, um, uh, screw the Daily Mail. So, anyway, here's the video right here. I'll go over it in, uh, in the next video since I only have 15 minutes here. Thank you, Honor List Network. Um... Now this says that this man's resembling him, but I'm sorry, that obviously is him, okay. Uh, pardon me. Uh, <laughs> and um, I seriously question this policewoman being shot because of the, uh, I can't see, you know, you can't see the CPR all the way, but it, it looks very similar in style as far as what you can see to the Ottawa shooting, the fake shooting of... Um, Oh, I can't remember his name now. Um, I was just talking about it today. And the NYPD hoax of uh, the Asian and the Hispanic officer, okay? And I'll go over what he says. It, same stuff right here. You can pause it if you want. Um, that'll be in part two. Um, the brothers of our team, they did Charlie Hedbo, he admits. Uh I'm sorry, this guy, <laughs> I don't buy it, especially after, um, I don't have an article here, okay, but uh, I'll have to find one here, that he uh, was radicalized by uh, Anwar al-Awlaki. Um, Al-Qaeda leader dined at the Pentagon just months after 9-11. This is from 2010 by Catherine Harridge, who also did this one, and... Um, and we're all lucky, maybe the first American on the CIA's killer capture list, but he was also a lunch guest of military brass at the Pentagon within months of the 9-11 attacks. Hmm. I wonder why. Yeah, because that's who's controlling it. Pentagon, the CIA, etc. Okay. Um, I'll leave a link to the article, of course. And then uh, four years later, well... And Mirasa, FBI documents show radical cleric Alaki communicated with federal agents in 2003. And look at this. In 2002, he was released from custody at JFK Airport despite an active warrant for his arrest with the OK of FBI agent Wade Ammerman. And this is uh, the link to the Judicial Watch article. Um, yeah, why are they letting him go? That no sense unless he is a asset. Anyway, um, documents further support claims that Alaki, who eventually went overseas and linked up with uh, an Al-Qaeda affiliate, worked with the FBI and was likely a U.S. government asset. The Judicial Watch president has little doubt that Obama assassinated uh, him and that he was an asset of the U.S. government. There have been so many missed opportunities in getting the bad guys. It's one thing to have the bad guy working with you and for you, but actually in your custody and then letting them go. And, uh, these unanswered questions cast President Obama's decision to assassinate him in a different light, and holy crap, isn't this your guy? 
the imam with their prostitutes asset right there 